Good evening, everyone. I'm Kirk Schultz, and I'm proud to serve as the 13th president of Kansas State University. K-State is proud of its heritage as the first operational land-grant university. We are here to serve the people of Kansas and the world through world-class research, teaching, and service. Today, we're on course to achieve recognition as a top 50 public research university by 2025. That's the plan for our future, which we know simply is K-State 2025. What role will you play in moving Kansas State University forward? A very considerable role. Our student leaders, exemplified by SGA President Eli Schooley, are an impressive and responsible group who play a vital role in shaping K-State's future. But all of our students contribute by supporting our principles of community, maintaining the university's honor and integrity, and most of all by your creative project, spirit, and infectious energy. The faculty, staff, and administration look forward to each fall, like this one, when we again connect with the spirit and energy of our students. Lastly, I want to recommend that each of you adopt what I call an attitude of academic conscientiousness. The root of this word is conscience. I encourage you to apply yourself rigorously and unfailingly in your studies this fall and throughout your undergraduate experience. Bring your A game. Focus on learning. Be curious. Embrace intellectual challenges. And by all means, help one another. Support one another as part of the K-State family. Together, we make a great learning community called Kansas State University. I wish I could be there with you to enjoy this new student convocation, the kickoff picnic, and the pep rally, but I'm there in spirit and very much look forward to working alongside you this fall, this year, and over the entire course of your undergraduate career at K-State. Go Cats! I know many are still coming in, but I'm a little overwhelmed at the numbers. It's wonderful to see all of you. Welcome, each and every one of you, to the 2013-2014 academic year at Kansas State University. My name's April Mason, and I have the distinct honor of serving as the Senior Vice President and Provost of Kansas State. I'm joined by fellow administrators, members of our President's Cabinet, the Council of Deans, and special guests specifically gathered this afternoon to welcome each of you. Together, we're truly delighted to welcome you to Kansas State University's inaugural new student convocation. And because of that, as, we as many of you continue to come in, I'd like us all to give ourselves a, a round of applause for being part of the inauguration, a great new tradition at Kansas State University. Even though this is the very first new student convocation, what is definitely not new at Kansas State is a tradition of welcoming new undergraduate students to the Kansas State University family. As President Schultz just indicated, K-State is a land-grant university founded 150 years ago to serve people of Kansas, people of the United States, and our world. When we think of our founding, we think of Abraham Lincoln, who signed the original Morrill Land Grant Act into law in 1862. Establishing land grant universities in each of our states, and President Lincoln, who cared deeply enough about expanding the opportunity for all people to receive high quality, advanced education. I want to jump ahead now from President Lincoln to our history at the time of the Second World War, when Milton S. Eisenhower, an Abilene native, Kansas State University alumnus, and younger brother of then General Dwight D. Eisenhower, when Milton Eisenhower was inaugurated as the ninth president of Kansas State University in 1943 almost exactly 70 years ago today. As was the case in 1862 and 1943, 
Our world today has many areas where we have tempest and conflict. For the second time in a generation, the people of Kansas, like people everywhere, look toward a future with very understandable trepidation. At the moment Milton Eisenhower reminded his audience about this, right here in Manhattan, Kansas, as well as to listeners coast to coast because the address was broadcast on national radio, he reminded everyone that Kansas State University needed to, and I'll quote from his inauguration speech, maintain and strengthen its excellent research, maintain and improve the quality of its technical and cultural training, and also provide to this generation, including the men and women who will return from the armed forces, the, those methods of teaching and those broad educational foundations which will yield habits of thinking, a broad understanding of relationships, and sound judgment in a complex society. That really sounds like what we all need to do today. President Eisenhower followed this by stressing that, and again I quote, our concern that men and women trained in scientific methods shall also gain tolerance and understanding and wisdom. Our concern is with the education of men and women determined to be free. As you come to Kansas State University, and as we assist you in becoming oriented to your studies this coming year, as we adopt the academic conscientiousness to which President Schultz has just alluded, we might also recall Eisenhower's celebration of the enduring value of the liberal arts and sciences alongside our very special land-grant mission to skillfully apply knowledge for the professional and practical betterment of our society and for all humanity. Our world today continues to face truly grand challenges. The economy, social and political unrest, poverty, hunger, homelessness. As the provost of an institution which features a stellar school of leadership studies, I hope you will forgive me echoing a familiar cliche when I say, our Kansas State University new undergraduate students today are indeed the next generation of leaders on whom we will all rely in the future. We'll rely on them for their insight, their creativity, their technical skill, well-rounded intelligence, and deep, deep personal perseverance on behalf of causes local, national, and globally. In fact, given Kansas State University's highly developed system for student participation, much of which you're going to see in the next few minutes, we have a shared governance system in our university, and we look to benefit from your leadership right now as you pursue your undergraduate studies. And so, as we come together as a university community to start seemingly innumerable individual and joint studies, to read Ernest Klein's novel, Ready Player One, I hope you all received in it and have at least opened it and looked at it, to work together to solve the grand challenges of our times, let us pause to honor Kansas State University's long tradition of making world-class academic excellence available to the people of Kansas and beyond. We're going to be showing you a videotape of the rich history of our university. Take a walk through the K-State campus today and you'll see a diversity of students free to make their own choices pursuing their individual goals and dreams. But how did we get here? History isn't just buildings, dates, and documents. It's blood, sweat, beliefs, determination. 
It is people. In 1855, nearly 80 men, women, and children boarded the steamship Hartford under the sponsorship of the Cincinnati and Kansas Land Company, bound for the Kansas Territory. They brought at least 10 prefabricated houses, material for business buildings, and provisions. Like those before them, these were educated men and women, judges, educators, ministers, businessmen and women, and they joined earlier settlers to establish a progressive, thriving settlement with a strong belief that education for all was key to an enlightened society. In 1858, nine of these early settlers obtained a charter from the Territory of Kansas Assembly, a charter for the Bluemont Central College Association. Backed by their beliefs, their hard-earned personal funds, and money raised back east, the cornerstone for this college was laid in May 1859. By January of 1860, a three-story limestone building was opened, with the Reverend Washington Marlette as principal and Miss Julia Bailey, the first teacher, hired. Fifty-three students were enrolled that winter. Kansas was still a territory a territory in considerable turmoil. On January 29, 1861, Kansas entered the Union as a free state. One month later, the Bluemont College Association offered to donate its building, library, and land to the new state of Kansas in exchange for its designation as the state university. Though this offer was rejected by the governor, a Lawrence native, the wheels had been put in motion for Bluemont Central College to one day become a state educational institution. In 1862, Justin Smith Morrill, a Vermont congressman, introduced the Land Grant College Act, a grand idea to promote education in each state of the Union. The Morrill Act was passed that same year and signed by President Abraham Lincoln. When the provisions of this new act were accepted by the state of Kansas in 1863, the Bluemont Central College Association acted quickly and again offered the college building, library, and land to the state. On February 16, 1863, Kansas State Agricultural College became a reality, the nation's first land-grant college. It opened in September 1863 with 52 students, 26 men and 26 women. In a nation ripped apart by the issue of slavery, in the midst of a devastating civil war, these early founders' determination, beliefs, blood, and courage established the principles of educational opportunities for all people. As we walk across the campus today, we see smartphones and laptops, things that didn't exist in 1863. But the most important thing, the principle of freedom and the opportunity of education for all has been here from the beginning. Each of you is truly in a very wonderful position to be here in the year 2013 while we continue to celebrate our sesquicentennial. Universities, their histories, as we just saw of Kansas State, their academic structures, practices, and traditions can truly be complicated, complex, and somewhat confusing. We're wearing regalia today that may be unfamiliar to you. Today, for example, Kansas State University features three campuses, one here in Manhattan, one in Salina, and one in Olathe. We have nine colleges, each headed by a dean, agriculture, architecture planning and design, arts and sciences, business administration, education, engineering, human ecology, technology and aviation, and veterinary medicine. We have a division of continuing education, a school of leadership studies, a library system, and a graduate school. Within each college are numerous departments. And within departments and between departments, many majors, 
secondary majors, minors, outreach and extension efforts, as well as certificate programs. Some 250 undergraduate academic options in all. You have a lot to choose from. Navigating through a university the size of Kansas State University can be challenging, and I don't blame you if you wonder at some point just how it all fits together. As the Chief Academic Officer and Senior Vice President, the Provost, I want to welcome you to this sometimes complicated academic space and assure you that what today may seem somewhat intimidating and perhaps a bit daunting will very soon, if it hasn't already, become your second home, your second family, and after you graduate, your lifelong alma mater. And for that, I am honored to acknowledge and give all credit to our outstanding, diverse, and caring faculty, to our outstanding, diverse, and caring advisors. These are, in some cases, one and the same persons. To our highly dedicated and professional staff throughout our entire university, including the realms of administration and finance, research, student life, communications and marketing, intercollegiate athletics, international programs, the KSU Foundation, K-State Alumni Association, and other areas represented by our vice presidents. I'm also pleased to acknowledge the critical role played by our returning students, both graduate and undergraduate, who in carrying forward in K-State's traditions and applying themselves with commitment and determination in their studies serve as inspiring role models and, as President Schultz noted, admired leaders in the here and now. And I think you've been greeted by many of them. As you may have heard us say before, our undergraduate students have been recognized since 1986 with more Rhodes, Marshall, Truman, Goldwater, and Udall scholarships, the most selective and prestigious scholarships there are. Kansas State has received more of these than any other U.S. public university. And our faculty, who mentor these and thousands of other outstanding graduate and undergraduate students, conduct research, engage in scholarship, and undertake creative enterprises, which regularly receive literally millions and millions of dollars in support from the state, from national and international funding agencies every year. These same faculty produce publications of the highest merit and receive awards reserved only for those accomplished in their respective fields of specialized inquiry. As we look forward to hosting the billion dollar National Bio and Agro Defense Facility that you'll see across from the co-recreational facility, in coming years, we'll expand our scholarly capacities in countless areas. I assure you that Kansas State University will remain a vital and nationally prominent university at the forefront of solving problems, natural and human found. Together with all those who are here in front of you, I want to tell you how glad we are that you have chosen to join us in this work. And we look forward equally to providing for you and with you our undergraduate colleagues the very highest quality undergraduate educational experience possible. Take advantage of what may at first appear new and different. Some of you I met this afternoon at our GPS uh, program. Expose yourself to a wide range of educational opportunities. Learn new things. This is a truly exciting time to be on our campus. And if you have difficulties or face any challenges, know that we have your back. You have many places to turn for advice, counsel, and assistance. You have only to ask for help in the classroom, 
in the laboratory, in the residence halls, with your advisors. Do that, please. For making such a smart decision to enroll at Kansas State University, I think we need to give ourselves one more round of applause. Good evening. It is my privilege to introduce tonight's keynote speakers to you. Both are recipients of the 2013 Alumni Association Distinguished Young Alumni Award, which is an award that recognizes young alumni who are excelling in their professions and contributing to their communities. Thank you to Target Corporation for their grant and support of our speakers this evening. Our first speaker is Mr. Nick Piper, class of 2008. I have known Nick since he was a sophomore in college. When visiting with him recently, I asked him about his favorite memories while at Kansas State. He told me working with student government on legislation to get the rec center expansion, which is just being completed and all of you will get to enjoy this year. Going on, the, going on an alternative spring break trip to New Orleans to repair and restore homes destroyed by Hurricane Katrina, and this is a good one, beating KU in basketball right here at Bramlage for the first time in 30 years. As you can see, Nick enjoyed various interests and activities while at Kansas State University. When Nick was in college, and even more so today, I have known him to be a hard worker, humble leader, and great community builder. Nick currently lives in China and is the founder and CEO of Foria Energy Solutions. He is unable to be with us tonight, but has taped a special message for you, the newest members of the Kansas State University community. Greetings, newest members of K-State family. Now you may be wondering why I chose to address you as family members rather than as students. It's the very same reason that sets this university apart from all other universities, because it will not only be the degree and academic pursuits that you will gain during your time on campus, but it will be the relationships that you cultivate and the leadership experiences that you will gain which will help you succeed in the global marketplace once you leave Kansas State. K-State is a one-of-a-kind university that truly cares about its students and their respective careers, and you will find throughout your time here that it is a family rather than just an institute of higher education. It was not that long ago that I was sitting exactly in the same place that you are now as an incoming freshman. I was anxious and ambitious, but I knew that in order to succeed, I had to constantly push my own limits and surround myself with great people who would continually make me better. Now as I look back on my career, which has led me to become an international entrepreneur that has lived in China for almost five years now, I realized it was not only the skill sets that I gained in the College of Business, Leadership Studies program, and studying Chinese at K-State for multiple years, but also the many incredible people that I met throughout my journey on campus. Kansas State University has a treasure trove of amazing organizations and people from which you can learn an untold amount of life lessons from, from a dynamic student government to the Student Alumni Association, which you can tap into a vast network of other passionate K-State alumni, to amazing Greek and housing organizations, as well as honorary associations, student-led clubs, and more. It was through my involvement in these organizations that I got to see the awesome power of how K-State is constantly transformed by its amazing student leaders, faculty, and administrators. I would say I learned just as much from all of the amazing students, faculty, and administrators as I did in the classroom. You may be surprised to realize that some of the greatest resources for your own leadership development, creativity, and finding your purposeful passion may be from the people sitting right next to you today. So this is the first challenge that I would like to give to all of you, is to get involved on campus as much as possible and look to surround yourself with other great people that will make you better and help you make a positive impact both on K-State's campus and the Manhattan community. The second challenge that I would like to pose to all of you is to constantly be expanding your international horizons. Today in the information age, the world is smaller than it has ever been before. As we saw through the economic crisis, 
we are all interdependent of one another in many areas of our economies, resources, and global trade. K-State's campus is a microcosm of the global village that we live in today, with amazing student organizations such as the Black Student Union, Hispanic American Leadership Organization, also known as HALO, the Saudi Arabian Student Union, the large population of Chinese students on campus, and many other international groups. I strongly encourage everyone to go out and build lasting relationships with students from all of these groups to expand your global perspective. Becoming a global citizen should be one of your primary goals during your time at K-State, and I strongly support anyone that wants to enhance their student experience by studying abroad. One of the best decisions that I ever made in my life was to study abroad in China during my junior year at K-State. I studied in Shanghai and traveled throughout the country and got my first taste of the rich culture and history that China had to offer. I remember the exact moment when I knew that international business was going to be my career path. I was standing on the rooftop of a building overlooking the skyline of downtown Shanghai called the Bund and seeing the illuminated futuristic buildings of the Shanghai skyline I knew that this was the place of movers and shakers of the world and I wanted to be right in the thick of it. I challenge everyone to expand their perspectives by looking to travel to all corners of the globe, but most importantly, realize that in our generation, it will take people from all continents of the world working together to overcome the global challenges that we will face during our lifetime. The pathway to gaining this global perspective will start right here on K-State's campus and your willingness to work together with students from all walks of life to create a better tomorrow. Finally, the three things I will leave you with. Number one, the only limits to your potential are the ones that you set on yourselves. Number two, the greatest battle that you will ever face is against a person staring right back at you in the mirror. And, and finally, the world is your playground and full of possibilities. It is up to you now to find your path and shape it. Thank you for your time, K-State family members, and I wish you nothing but the best as you pursue your passions and dreams. And remember, woman's the DJ Ren. Zai Jin. Well done, Nick. Our second speaker is Ms. Justine Sterling, class of 2007. I have had the good fortune of knowing Justine since her freshman year of college. Justine was involved in many activities. She was in Silver Key, Chimes, and Blue Key Honoraries, and was a member of Chi Omega Sorority and Student Alumni Board, to name a few. While at K-State, Justine also served as a state and national FFA officer and took a year off from K-State to travel the country on FFA's behalf. If you ask Justine her favorite memories of Kansas State University, she might mention getting to take classes in her major, watching her friends launch the K-State Proud campaign, which is based on the idea of students helping students, attending football games, or the sweet, sweet satisfaction of her graduation day. My favorite memory Justine shared with me was her waiting in line for hours to get land and lecture tickets to hear President George W. Bush speak. Ironically, Justine ended up working for the president in the White House. President Bush has since asked Justine if she was at the Landon Lecture that day, and he laughed in disbelief at how long Justine waited in line to get a ticket. It is no surprise to me that Justine still impresses the President and his family, as she currently serves as Director of Alumni Relations at the George W. Bush Presidential Center. I am also guessing she may be the only person here today who has a former President's cell phone number in her contact list. Justine is an amazing young woman who makes a lasting impression on anyone she meets. She is sincere, dedicated, and capable of doing anything she desires. Without any further ado, Ms. Justine Sterling. Thank you, Gail. Uh, that is very nice of you. However, I think that you left a few things out of my introduction, um, which maybe some of you can relate to. So um, I lived in Moore Hall, third floor. Good, I thought, I, I figured some of you might be here. I ate at the Derb, anybody? Still there, right? Good. Uh, I was one time walking across campus and um, it was in the middle of the winter, my freshman year, okay? And this is, you'll, you might feel like this. I got to December where I was a cool freshman. I knew every building, I knew where I was going. I had my class scheduled down and there was all this ice and you'll, you'll soon find out that they don't cancel classes hardly ever 
And so, of course, classes were not canceled, and of course I was going to get to my class because I was very dedicated, and I literally wiped out in the middle of the courtyard on all of the ice in front of everyone. Uh, so that was part of my introduction, I did that. So I hope none of you do that. I um, went to bid day. Anybody go to bid day on Friday, right? Yes. So some of you probably experienced that uh, where you meet all of these girls all in one week and all of a sudden you're all best friends and you take lots of selfies together, right? And pretend like you know each other and you've known each other for years, right? Anybody do that? So, so some of you, I promise, it wasn't that long ago that Nick and I were here uh, sitting in, your, in, your, in those same chairs, nervous, nervous about getting lost tomorrow, which you won't, and it, it, you'll be fine. Um, I heard them actually saying backstage that you guys are on freshman standard time, so uh, it's totally fine. You're on freshman standard time, right? Totally fine. You guys like that, huh? Good one. Uh, thanks. Wasn't mine. Um, but I think the biggest thing that you have to remember is that it's okay to be a freshman, and it's okay if you're nervous tomorrow, and it's okay if on Friday at the first game, right? Don't we have a first game, maybe? Okay, well, you're gonna have to do better than that because they'll kick you out of GA and ICAT if you don't do better than that, just warning you. Um, but on Friday, I remember my first football game uh, being so nervous that I was going to mess up my whole row in the Wabash Cannonball because, you know, if one person's off, the whole row's off. So I don't want you to be nervous or anything, but, but you should be prepared, practice. Aren't they gonna teach them that tonight, maybe? Yeah. Yes. So, first of all, um, on behalf of Nick and I, and on behalf of all alumni, especially young alumni, um, I want you all to do something really quickly. The one thing I've learned to do uh, since in my career, in college, anytime I would set a goal, I would do something um, where I visualize it. Someone taught me this a long time ago. You all may do this. It's, it's nothing special. But someone told me if you visualize your goal and you can see yourself happening, you can see yourself doing it, then that's what will happen. Okay, so it's very simple. I don't know if you have taken the time yet to realize that you all actually got in to K-State. Okay, so that's, that's, congratulations, by the way. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. Now, I don't know if you've realized, um, if you've taken the time to think about the fact that you are in college, you're about to start your first day tomorrow, and it's very hard to think about commencement, which is four, maybe five, you know, maybe six years away, totally fine, totally fine, however long you take. But this is a lot, this is how it will feel. And that's why this convocation is so cool. Um, we didn't have this when I was here, but as I walked in, I felt very kind of like one of these things is not like the other among this very distinguished faculty in my bright blue dress. I was like, I should have worn black, I should have worn black. Um, but this is a lot how it feels. So you're in Bramlage, you are in your cap and gown. Are you visualizing with me? Okay. So four, five, six years. In four, five, six years, you're standing right here. And I think it usually faces that way. And you're in your cap and gown, and all of these distinguished faculty members lead you in. And the music is playing. Dun, 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 dun. Can you see it? You can hear it, you can hear it, you can feel it. I think if you guys reach into the bags they gave you, you have, they have those tassels. Did you see that? Anyone? Got it? You're not giving me a lot here, guys. They're in there? Yes? Yeah, thank you. Got it. Thanks. Oh, good. They're showing me. Thank you. So I think it's very important to start out tonight, this night, before your first day of class. Thanks, guys, for showing me this. Thank you. So tonight, before your first day of class, before your first football game, before your first semester, to keep in mind that that's the end goal, okay? That day of commencement when they're playing the music and you're in your, you're in your cap and gown and you graduate and you have an education and you earn the right to wear purple. You earn that right. That is our right to wear purple and be a wildcat. That is gonna happen, okay? That's gonna happen. Everybody got that? Good, good. Okay, so give yourselves a round of applause for graduating. Great, great. Good. So, you know, on behalf of young alumni, um, Nick and I knew each other in college, and 
I actually, they sent me his video to, to watch, and we have very similar advice, and I think that's very, it's great, because there's not a lot to being successful at K-State and, and succeeding in what you do and having a good career, and it's very simple. So the first one, I want to tell you a little story. So as Gail mentioned, I um, interned, I started my career by interning at the White House. So I left K-State, I um, graduated, and I took an unpaid internship at the White House, so they don't pay you. So I had a degree, I'd gone through commencement, I felt awesome, I was a real wildcat. Oh, by the way, and I had no money, no paycheck. And um, I moved to DC, and I was so excited, probably similar to some of how some of you are feeling today. I was so excited to meet the other interns and get to know them and get to know my office of what I was gonna do. So I walked in on the first day of my internship and I met the other people in my office. So I was in the Office of Intergovernmental Affairs, happened to be the only girl in my office, and so I was meeting the other three guys who I was gonna intern with. One of them's name was Jeff, okay? So I say, hi Jeff, I'm Justine, it's so nice to meet you. Um, I went to Kansas State, I just actually graduated. Where'd you go to school? And he said, I went to Harvard. And I mean, I have to say, I was a little starstruck. I mean, you know, I was like, Harvard, like, like the real Harvard, really? Like, that's great, that's cool, I mean, good for you. But, you know, bad football, but whatever, it's totally fine, totally fine. So, you know, he says, yeah, I go to Harvard, so I'm kind of starstruck, and I was like, this is cool, I I'm gonna make a friend, and we're gonna be friends, and my friend went to Harvard. So I have all these big plans that Jeff and I are gonna be friends, and so, turns out that, um, as the internship went on, Jeff would show up late, and so we were supposed to be there at eight o'clock, you know, and he would roll in, he would go to McDonald's every day and get his like whatever coffee, special Harvard coffee that he drank, and roll in, and he was late. He took off one afternoon one day and told them, um, told our bosses that he had to go run an errand for something for work. Don't worry, uh, this is gonna date me a little. He was going to get the very first iPhone. FYI, which I was frustrated, but I was still kind of starstruck because I was like, of course you have the first iPhone. I, you know, might still have a flip phone back then. Um, so, you know, he like left to go get the iPhone. He showed up late. He left early. We had to do this very, very important intern job of schlepping the pop from the basement of the building up so that all the paid employees could drink it. Wasn't that, <laughs> that great? Very glamorous. And Jeff would just sit in his chair while we like schlepped in our, like all the girls would go in our heels. So needless to say, I was not impressed with Jeff. And um, just so you know, Jeff ended up getting kicked out of the intern program, um, Harvard or not, and you know, was totally unsuccessful. And I learned a very important lesson because I was very starstruck by meeting someone who went to Harvard. But guess what? Harvard has nothing on K-State. Nothing, nothing! I do mean that, I mean that you all. I, I really mean that we, this is literally one of the best universities. I will think that for the rest of my life. I tell everyone that, I tell President Bush that. He always knows how our football team's doing because I always tell him and he, you know, he keeps up too. And don't be a Jeff, that's the bottom line. Sorry if your name's Jeff. I mean, don't, you know, don't be, don't be the Jeff. Because, so you have to think of it as you're coming into K-State and you have literally so many opportunities, and I know you go to these things and they're throwing them at you, and they are like, sign up for this, and go to class, and oh, by the way, meet all of these girls in the sorority, and be really cool in this fraternity, and be on the sports team, I saw the athletes, right? Like, don't worry, just practice like a million hours a day, and go to class, and deliver on the weekends too, you know, like, come on, no big deal, no pressure. And I think it's a good opportunity right now to think, okay, what am I gonna do? What, how am I gonna make this special? And you know, you can be a Jeff, you can, but I, I really don't want you to be, um, I really don't. And whatever you do, whatever you put in, is what you will get out. It's very cliche and you all have heard it a million times. Um, but I think it's important to remember that being involved and you know, putting in what you get out at K-State does not mean signing up for a million things, every organization you can find. I had a little bit of that syndrome freshman year, like, oh yeah, that's definitely the way to success. Sign up for 12 organizations and don't sleep and 
take 18 hours so I can brag. And guess what? That's not the way to success either. Balance. Balance is the key. So pick your organizations. Make time to go out with friends. I mean, I don't know. I, I went to Aggieville a couple times during college, I think. You know, I can't really remember where that is, you know. But seriously, it's totally fine to be in college and have fun and go to class. By the way, we all, we're not even going to address that because that's not even an option to not go to class, right? Everyone knows if you don't go to class, it's not going to work. So we're not even, we don't even need to touch that one. Get involved. Have fun. Make friends. Don't just talk to the person who you came to from your high school who you, is, your, is your friend because I promise, and this is fine, if you want to graduate in four or five or six years and be in Bramlage and you've only talked to that one person who you came to high school with, that's probably the one person that you'll leave friends with. So, you know, you get out what you put in. So, take this time. This is the perfect opportunity, the night before your first class, to think, all right, this is what I'm going to do. And it's very similar to what Nick and I did. And it, we are not perfect. It took me, it actually took me four years to figure it out. My senior year, I finally got it right, where I had a good combination of always studying, being involved, not too involved, don't kill yourself. Oh yeah, and be in college, go to the sports, like go to the games, have fun, make friends. It's a balance. Okay, so obviously you get out what you put in. You've got the whole, your whole college ahead of you. The other thing that I really wish someone would have told me, and they did, and I didn't listen, so I really want you to listen, okay? Just promise me you'll listen to this. I kept hearing everyone, my professors, you know, everyone kept saying, um, I would hear people like Nick Piper say, study abroad, get an internship. I'm like, yeah, 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 this internship word, why do they keep saying that? And it's so weird, because it actually works. Um, it's very weird, but Nick and I are the biggest proponents, and I would say, um, the reason we found success in our careers, and trust me, we are still figuring it out. We are very young, and I think he would say too, we got a long way to go. But I did an internship, he studied abroad, and that's the only reason where we, that's the only reason both of us got our jobs today. Um, just a little bit of advice, every place I've ever worked, the White House, I worked in President Bush's private office, and now I work at the Bush Center, and none of those places hire anyone who has not interned there before or, in the White House case, who had campaigned there. We literally, entry level, people who haven't had a lot of experience, we do not hire you unless you have an internship. So please, just, put, just file that away and remember in a couple years that that's a good thing to do. My biggest regret, which Nick did, is study abroad. So learn from my lessons and do that study abroad, get an internship, get a job, and remember the end goal is graduate, get a job, be able to be a season ticket holder, right? It's one of my goals. I'm still not, you guys. That's, I've got to achieve that one day. But seriously, we are rooting for you. There are so many alumni who are jealous of you. Trust me, I asked a lot of my friends, and we're all jealous that we can't go back to this very day and be freshmen and or transfer students and about to start college all over again because it's the best, the best, and you all are gonna have the best time. So we're rooting for you. Go Cats. I can't wait to hear about all of your success. Thank you. Well, good evening, everyone. I, too, would like to add my welcome to all of those that have come before. My name is Dr. Myra Gordon, and I'm the Associate Provost for Diversity here at Kansas State University. You have made an absolutely wonderful choice to come to this university, and as some of the other speakers have noted, this university is very, very special because we specialize in helping you to be successful. From here, you can go anywhere. And so it's marvelous to have you at our university. 
I'm here today with seven of our student leaders. And these young people are going to talk with you about the principles of community and our honor and integrity code. These are some of the defining characteristics of our culture here at Kansas State University, where we have a culture of academic excellence. As the president mentioned, you need to bring your A game. We mean really your A game, not your B game or your C game, your real A game, and diversity and inclusion. And so I'd like to turn the program over now to our students, Marcus. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Marcus Bragg, and I am a senior in management information systems from Kansas City, Kansas. And actually, as a testament to what Justine just said, uh, I'm going into my senior year, and today just accepted my first job because of an internship. So it's very important that you all take that opportunity. But I also have the great honor of serving as the president of our most outstanding black student union in the Big 12 Conference. And the principle of community, which I want to talk to you guys about today, is that we affirm the inherent dignity and value of every person and strive to make an atmosphere of justice based upon respect for one another. And at K-State, you can really see this, uh, this principle, principle demonstrated every day because as a student, you are truly valued for your diversity, for your unique background, and for everything about you that makes you you. And I think that's what makes us such a great university here at Kansas State. Thanks. Hello, everybody. My name is Jeff Andrade. Well, I'm actually a good Jeff. <laughs> I am a senior in electrical engineering from Emporia, Kansas and I am the current president of the Hispanic American Leadership Organization. The principle that I am representing today is we affirm the value of human diversity for the community. And the way that I've encountered that here at Kansas State University is through the various organizations that I have become involved in. In these organizations, I have met many students from all sorts of diverse backgrounds, and together we have created a very strong community here at Kansas State University. Hello everyone, my name is Sharon Williams. I'm a junior majoring in accounting. I'm from Wichita, Kansas, and I am the treasurer of the Black Student Union. And the principle that I have is that we affirm the right of each person to freely express thoughts and opinions in the spirit of civility and decency. We believe that the diversity of our views enriches our learning environment, and we promote open expression within the climate of courtesy, sensitivity, and mutual respect. And when I think of this, I think of progression. Progression that we are able to talk about controversial subjects in the classroom, on campus or off campus, with an open mind and coming from different backgrounds, and that we're able to challenge ourselves. Because without this, our thoughts and actions would remain stagnant, and we wouldn't be able to progress. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Jessica Prado. I am a senior in animal science pre-vet with a minor in French and international business. I am from Olitha, Kansas, and I represent the Board of Latino Organizations tonight. And the principle that I'd like to share with you tonight is we affirm the value of honesty and integrity. We will operate with honesty in all of our professional endeavors, and we will expect the same from all of our colleagues. This means that whatever choices you make, Make sure you keep in mind the consequences and the impact on your lives. Because once you acquire those skills, it will benefit you wherever you go. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Jasmine Richmond. I'm a senior majoring in nutritional sciences and gerontology, and I'm from Kansas City, Kansas. I am the current president of National Panhellenic Council. And the principle that I'd like to share with you guys today is that we acknowledge that we are part of multiple communities and we have an obligation to be engaged in a positive way with our civic partners. And the way that I've experienced this at K-State is that I'm a part of multiple organizations on campus and I try to be a positive influence in each one of those organizations. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Natasha Nguyen. I represent the Asian American Student Union as the Vice President. I'm a junior studying in industrial engineering and I'm from Scott City, Kansas. And the principle I'd like to talk to you about today is we recognize our individual obligations to the university community and to the principles that sustain it. We will each strive to contribute to a positive spirit that affirms learning and growth for all members of the community. I've experienced this when I share my culture to the community, and in return, I learned of all the new and many different cultures here. 
When you are here, you will have the opportunity to experience a new and different world that will help you prepare for the real world outside of K-State. Good evening, my name is Eli Schooley. I'm a senior in political science pre-law from Clay Center, Kansas, and I'm this year's student body president here at K-State. Um, so tonight, what I want to tell you about is something that I think has become pretty evident already throughout tonight's ceremony, and that's that K-State is a really special place. There's a number of things that make K-State special, but the ones that come to my mind first um, are, the, are the amount of effort that our teachers put in to help students learn on a daily basis, um, the amount of care that our advisors have here on campus to helping students in everything they do, um, and the amount of academic assistance, like tutoring, that's offered here at K-State, most often for free, to ensure that students can succeed in whatever classes and whatever major it is that they're pursuing. So looking back at my time so far here at K-State, I can say that one of the best feelings I've had on a semi-consistent basis is that when I've worked hard, when I've studied each and every day, and when I feel like I've ended a semester by actually learning something in classes, not by just cramming for tests, but by actually learning and leaving a semester feeling like I've enlightened myself and grown intellectually. And with that idea of community and of growing intellectually um, comes, comes the principle of trust. And when it comes to academics, trust looks a whole lot like hard work, to take a line from Ashton Kutcher. Um, it also looks a whole lot um, like doing your own work and making sure that you're putting forth the effort that it takes to make the money and the hard work that you've already put forth to be here at K-State worth it. So with that, I would ask you to please rise and join me in the recitation of the honor code statement. <clears throat> Repeat after me. Actually, don't. Join in with me. On my honor, as a student, I will never give nor receive unauthorized aid in my academic work. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Kansas State University. I'm former student body president and current governor Sam Brownback, and I'm a proud alumnus of this great university. It is a pleasure to speak to you. Students, you have made an excellent decision to attend, attend Kansas State University. Consider yourself lucky to be at this pioneering land-grant university, especially this year as K-State celebrates its sesquicentennial. 150 years of forward moving as a university, and there's no sign of slowing down. I firmly believe that I would not have been as successful as I am today without the skills, knowledge, and relationships and opportunities that K-State provided me as a student. As I mentioned, I was once student body president. I considered that one of my most influential leadership roles because I learned leadership. I learned it in a very practical way. Since then, I've always tried to carry with me that wildcat spirit. I hope to inspire you to make the most of your undergraduate experience. Now keep in mind the mission of this university, the first land-grant university in the nation, now your university, and that is to provide challenging and internationally recognized academic opportunities to anyone who is prepared and willing to put forward the requisite effort and determination. Your future can be limitless if you take advantage of all that K-State has to offer. K-State will help you meet your academic goals as well as expand your cultural horizons and enrich your social experiences. It is obviously one of the most important times of your life, a time to learn about the world around you and to challenge yourself to see what you're made of. You're also going to make lifelong friends and associates who will share that wildcat spirit. So I encourage you to enjoy week of welcome, starting with this convocation and the pep rally that will follow. Work hard in and out of the classroom. Go Wildcats! Please join me in showing our appreciation to Governor Brownback, as well as President Schultz, Dr. Gail Spencer, distinguished alumni Nick Piper and Justine Sterling, Dr. Gordon, and the students who presented the principles of community and SGA president, student, uh, student president Eli Schooley. We've gone a little long on time. I was going to introduce our party uh, sitting here because you will see them again at commencement. 
our vice presidents, our faculty, our dean's council who have come to be here and support this. I'm going to dispense with that and I hope they will understand. I wish to conclude this inaugural new student convocation by urging you to take to heart what our students have said about community and honor, what our distinguished recent alumni have said about the K-State family and the importance of exploring the diversity of our ever more integrated world, and thinking searchingly about how you can make a lasting contribution to your own family, your own community, and your nation, the community of all nations and all people. So as you go forward, tomorrow to class, don't give up until you reach that ultimate goal signified in your, pe in your bag by that tassel. A robust, rigorous, well-rounded education and the diploma from Kansas State University and the transcript to prove that you are a graduate. First, please join us next door for our traditional K-State kickoff picnic and pep rally in the Bill Snyder Family Stadium. Food is being served and our athletic staff are waiting there for you. Welcome to Kansas State University, and we wish you, you bet. Go State!